Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achern and welcome back to my C++ series. So in the last video, I explained why I don't like using namespace STD. If you guys haven't checked that video out, definitely do so. But I haven't actually talked about what namespaces are in this C++ series. And because in that video, I specifically wanted to talk about the standard namespace and why I don't like using namespace STD. But today, we're gonna to be talking about what namespaces are in C++ why they're useful, when I would, when I wouldn't use them, why they exist, and all the different things that we can do with them. So if we jump right into this, this is the code that we had written in that previous video where we talked about why I don't like using namespace everywhere and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk a little bit about what we actually see on the screen here and how we can further extend our usage of namespaces and why namespaces are actually used and necessary. So over here, we essentially have this issue where we have two print functions. Now they do have different signatures. One of these takes in a string, one of these takes in a const char. But if we kind of revert to maybe both of them taking in a const char, so if I change this string one to actually take in a const char pointer like so, we kind of may have an issue if we weren't using namespaces because these functions are identical. If I just kind of comment out this namespace apple uh, line of code here and the orange one as well, Suddenly we have a little bit of an issue. If I try and, I'll fix up this error as well. If I try and just compile this by hitting control F7, you can see over here that I get an error because it's telling me that this print function that takes in the const char pointer already has a body because I have two symbols with the same name and they're identical symbols. Now when I say symbols, I'm talking about things like classes, functions, variables, constants, that kind of that kind of thing, right? So we have in this case two functions called print, which take in const char pointer and return void. They have the same signature. So these two symbols are identical. We can't have two identical symbols. That's a linking error and potentially a compilation error in there if they're actually in the same file. So how do we fix that? What if we do want to have two print functions? Or what if we use another library that has already defined a print function, but we want to have our own print function? Now, back in the days of C, and in fact, that still is a thing, C doesn't have namespaces, which is why if you would have noticed in the OpenGL series, as an example, we're using a library called GLFW, which is an OpenGL kind of windowing and context library and input and all that kind of stuff, right? But the point is GLFW is a C, is a C library. It's compatible with both C and C++. Because it's a C library, they can't use namespaces, which is why if you notice in that series, all of the code that we write that has something to do with GLFW begins with, like literally every function starts with GLFW and then like the function name. For example, GLFW init or GLFW create window. All of that stuff has GLFW literally prepended to the front of it. With OpenGL, it's kind of the same thing as well. We have GL and then the symbol name. So like GL begin, GL end, GL gen vertex buffers, that kind of thing, right? We have an act the, the actual name of the library or some kind of ID embedded into the function name. So in our code, that would be the equivalent of if I had literally written something like apple print, right? And orange print. And then now you can see that, oh, okay, these two functions are different because this is like the apple print version. This is the orange print version. And that's actually what C libraries tend to do because they can't just, you know, I, I can't make a function just called init because init is such a common name. What if, you know, if every library was to do it was to just name their functions init, then you could never use those libraries together without having to modify the source code. So what they do usually is just kind of prepend the name of the library to it. So GLFW init. And that works because, well, it's a fairly unique name, right? GLFW init. Okay, cool. That's specific to that GLFW library. Now in C++, instead of us having to do all this, we have namespaces to solve that issue. The primary purpose of namespaces is to avoid naming conflicts. That's why they exist, to avoid naming conflicts, okay? That's it, sort of. Just if you're getting confused by why namespaces exist or why they're being used, it's because of naming. We want to be able to call symbols the same name in different contexts. So if we go back here into Apple print, instead of having this, what we can do is enclose this symbol in a namespace. In this case, what we write is namespace, the name of the namespace, and then just as if it was any kind of function, we surround it with curly braces, which everything in, everything in between these curly brackets is included in that Apple namespace. 
Now, personally, I like to write my curly bracket on the same line as the actual namespace declaration. I don't like doing this. The reason that happens is because when we have multiple nested namespaces, it gets a little bit messy. So what I like to do is if we had Apple and then maybe like functions or something, you know, I have this here and also with the end braces, instead of kind of writing it this way, which is what Visual Studio will try and try and auto format it to, I like to just have it on the same line. That way my actual functions are one level indented and not like two or three or four or depending on how many namespaces we actually have nested. Uh, so that's just my personal preference. You don't have to follow that, but that's why I kind of put all this stuff on the same line. So that being said, we now have a have an Apple print function. If I go over here into orange and get rid of these comments as well, we have this orange print function. I can rename it to uh, just print. So we're, we're able to have two functions with exactly the same signature in this file. And when it comes time to call it, what we do is we need to specify which one we need, we need to call. So print is now inside either the Apple or the orange namespace. We have two of them. So if we want to use the one from Apple, we just type Apple colon colon and then print. This colon colon is essentially like a namespace operator. So what you do is every kind of namespace that you go, as you drill down into a namespace, you just put a colon colon and that is what I guess enters into that namespace or allows you to call things from that namespace. The same thing applies to static functions, I guess, or symbols in classes and like methods and classes and all that stuff. A class is kind of like a namespace. It is a, it is a namespace of its own, which is why if we're accessing like a, an inner class inside another class or like an enum or, you know, like I gave the example of like static functions or even non-static functions in some cases, we use colon colon. So that's what the colon colon kind of means. So this double colon is used to uh, get the print function from the Apple. Uh, and if we were to run this, we would just get hello printing normally. If I want to call the orange one, obviously I type in orange. Now that whole using namespace thing that we talked about in the last episode was just a way to not have to write this kind of apple or orange kind of prefix. So instead of having to do this, what we can say is that actually we're using namespace apple, which means that basically import everything from namespace apple as if I had never specified it as a namespace. So in this case, print will be used from apple. If I want, I can change it to orange. I can also say if we have multiple things in here, like we have print and maybe print, I don't know, print again or something. Uh, if I have multiple functions, maybe I don't want to use print again from orange. I, I just want to, uh, sorry, that's, that's an apple. So let's go to using namespace apple. Maybe I don't want print again. When I, when I put this using namespace, I don't want to use print again. I still want to specify maybe which print again I want, I just want print to be imported. So to do that, we can just write using Apple and then the function name print. Okay. That means that we're going to take this from the Apple namespace specifically, but for this, we'd still have to specify that namespace like that. You can also create aliases for namespaces by just typing in namespace, you know, a equals Apple or something like that. That means I can type in a print like that instead of having to spell out Apple. That's very useful for when you have nested namespaces. So we can also nest namespaces as you probably saw earlier. So we can have Apple and maybe we include all of our function and we enclose all of our functions inside of this functions namespace for some reason. Don't ask me why, just an example. So we have namespace Apple, we have namespace functions. And then instead of us having to write, you know, Apple functions like that, or, you know, something like using, using namespace, Apple functions like this, we could also, by the way, for this example, you can also split this up. So you can be like using namespace Apple and using namespace functions, which would allow us to not have to specify any namespace for print at all. So instead of us having to do this or in the earlier example that we can also just say namespace a equals Apple functions which means that I can just type in a print as if it was in one namespace and I would get that result over there. Okay, so that's a pretty basic example of how namespaces work. Um, I'm not sure if there's really anything else that I need to talk about. Obviously things like, the, things like this are confined to the actual scope. So in other words, a, this namespace a equals Apple functions only exists within this main function. I can't access it outside. Uh, my recommendation is when you do things like this, like namespace a equals blah, 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 or using namespace, whatever, 
My recommendation is you try and confine it to as small a scope as possible. If you just need it inside an if statement, for example, you know, write your, write your declaration inside that if statement. If you just need it inside a function, then write it inside the function. And then as a last result, as a last resort, write it in the, like kind of in the top level file, but don't try and like, just, you know, declare it in the, at the top level at all times or in header files, certainly never do it in header files. The reason we don't want to do that is because when we get, you know, if we start using namespace everywhere, then as you can probably imagine that kind of undoes all of the helpful work that namespaces do by avoiding naming conflicts. Because if we're using it, what's the point of having our functions in namespaces if we have to, if, if, if we use namespace anyway, right? It imports everything, which means that we might as well not be using namespaces. And we can get back to the problem of having naming conflicts between libraries or between our own code. So that's just a few things to think about. Um, I've left a link below to the CPP reference page on namespaces. This has a few examples of what you can actually do. So there's also something called an inline namespace, which really just kind of makes everything available to the parent namespace. Uh, we also have since C++ 17, the ability to actually specify namespaces kind of like this. So in this case, when I had this functions, instead of having to do namespace apple, then namespace functions, I can actually just write namespace functions like that. Be aware that that's not supported by all compilers, of course. And it is a new kind of C++ thing. Um, I recommend you read through this page if you wanna know everything that you can do with namespaces. I've pretty much covered most of the useful things. Obviously, the reason why we use namespaces is kind of to, if we are creating a library of code or if we just have our project, we want to put it behind a namespace so that we don't get any naming conflicts. That way I'm free to create any function that I really want. Everything in the C++ standard library is behind the standard STD namespace. So obviously you're not going to get naming conflicts like that. However, if you use any kind of C code, no such thing as namespaces, which means that when you do use C code, you are potentially risking a naming conflict. So even in your C++ project, I would still use a namespace, of course, because if you use any C code, then that's going to be an immediate conflict if it has the same function name as what you're actually declaring. Anyway, that's namespaces. Leave your thoughts below, leave your thoughts on why you use namespaces, why you don't like using namespaces, where you would, where you wouldn't, all that kind of stuff. I think it's pretty clear that when you are writing code, you should be writing it behind a namespace if it's any kind of serious project. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. You can help support the series by going over to patreon.com forward slash the churno. You'll get access to videos early and many other awesome rewards. Thank you so much to the, all of the lovely patrons that helped bring this series to life. It wouldn't be here without you. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.